What does SMSF cost? Is what we're talking about today on the East Central Business Show. I'm John Naylor, joined by Helen Baker, a resident expert financial planner. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, now, we're we gonna do advice today. Are you gonna give any advice? <laughs> no, we're gonna do disclaimers, so it's general chit chat today. Okay, fabulous, all right. So, um, in our last video, we talked about what is SMSF and um, sort of got a bit of a picture about where it does fit, where it doesn't fit type thing. But one thing I've been concerned about is that there seems to be a, quite a cost involved that what, right. what is that on an annual basis typically? Is there a, an average or expected number about the management overhead cost of yeah. self-managed super? So I think there's the initial cost, which is um, setting up all the, the paperwork around it, mm -hmm. um, getting all the structures in play, working that in with your estate planning, all of those sorts of things. And there's a range. I know I had one person ring me up and say they wanted to buy a property. Um, mm -hmm. and they were going to buy in a self-managed super fund, which I wasn't even sure whether it was necessary to be in that fund or whether it should be in another structure. Mm -hmm. um, and she had a quote from another advisor that was $10,000. And mm -hmm. I said, well, what do you get for $10,000? Like, it's just a nice round number, but what, what are you getting for that? So there's a lot of range in terms of that, in terms of setup costs. And in, in my opinion, to do it properly, you would want to have an accountant, a financial advisor, and then the estate planner all involved in making that work. So left hand and right hand are all working with each other. Right. Then on an annual basis, it's the structure. So it needs um, tax returns done on it. It needs audits done on it. So there's a compliance team that the accountants will either do some of that and outsource the compliance as well to be checked. So you get a double check. So that has additional costs mm -hmm. as well. So it depends on what the purpose of that self-managed super fund is and how much is in there mm. to make it, is it, does it make sense? Yeah, okay. But even still, like, uh, even if you're going to just use a regular superannuation fund, you still, you'd probably advocate, be an advocate for using a financial planner and doing the estate component part. But does that become a bit dearer though? That yeah, certainly if you've got a small amount of money, it's mm. probably not worthwhile. It comes back again to the investment. So if you look at your normal superannuation fund, a retail fund or an industry fund, you pay an admin fee and mm. you pay an investment fee proportional to how you're invested. Mm. And that takes care of the cost. But there's multitudes of those super funds so that you get a bit of an economies of scale. Mm -hmm. When you're doing an individual self-managed super fund, it's you know a one-on-one, -on -one, it has to be audited, it has to be compliant. So depending on how much is going on in there will determine what the cost of that is from the accountant's perspective and if you're going to pay a financial advisor to guide you on the investments as well. Yeah, right. Well, that's all starting to add up in, in my book, Helen. I mean, it sounds like it's sort of a, sort of even sort of a half million dollar you know, investment pool or something like that for your crypto and your exotic car collection, the wine uh, yep. no, that you've got to put in self. No, I'm being facetious. No, but it sounds like it's going to be a fair sort of pool of money before it yeah. becomes relevant. I would think so. To make so. sure you get growth. I would think so. I would think probably 300, 400 grand is a good place to start thinking about something like that. Okay. It may be less depending on whether it's linked to a business. So if you're putting a commercial property in there because you're then going to pay rent to tenant. your, yeah, mm -hmm. then some of that can make sense as well. Oh, okay. But it, these are the links that go back to other problems. Um, for example, if there's a separation and all the money is in the property, how are you going to break that up in terms of a, a divorce? Mm. So there's other consequences. So you got to have well, we don't set, We don't think about that at the outset all the of time, marriage. All the time, no. <laughs> Usually not. <laughs> no, sorry, I broke your pattern there. But the yeah, so there, there is definitely um, the, the considerations about what's going to be in that self-managed super fund and what should happen in certain situations. Should you need to drill down on that type thing? Yeah, and, and that compliance thing we touched on our, in our previous video around um, the, the compliance cost and the, or, you know the lack of compliance means you're going to get in a lot of trouble. Yeah, exactly right. The consequences are quite severe. They range from fines to, you know, losing like half your fund or, you know, go to jail. Like there's some serious consequences if you get it wrong. And it's amazing in our busy life that something very small can kind of slip through the cracks. Mm. The other things like maintaining the nominations on your super fund, often people forget those in normal superannuation funds, but often even more so in a self-managed super fund. So all of those components, they just become a whole lot more 
um, paperwork and things that you need to deal with. So doing it totally self is probably not a good idea. You certainly want to have some other people around you to support you, make sure you don't miss anything. Yeah, okay, good. And that, again, becomes a cost then if you yeah. lack compliance and get in trouble. And that you spoke in the, in the last video about it, particularly you know, applying a large charge to your super and taking a lot of money off you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So be being careful. they being those guys, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. But anyway, look, let's try and some positive uh, spin in this sort of thing. So there's certainly places in which the cost is overcome. You're yes. Suggesting upwards of three, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars type thing. Yeah. And then if you're looking for things where there's a uh, where there's a diversity, it's a particular thing you'd like to invest in or see as an opportunity. Then there's a there's a serious upside to it. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely yeah. worth looking at case by case basis though, and I think that's the difference if you go to somebody who's actually going to say no more times than they say yes mm. rather than everyone gets the same thing I think that's what you want to be making sure you get to the people who are going to advise you accordingly yeah for sure well even yep. though I've got a bit of a zest for reading books this year I, I still don't consider myself someone that wants to take on even that responsibility I mean am I being ignorant of that well you don't have to answer that <laughs> <laughs> but there's a certain level that's like, no, shouldn't I, shouldn't I leave that to a professional? Yeah. yeah. It's to me, this kind of, if they're big amounts of money, is you either want to engage professionals to make sure it's done pr properly and protect yourself hmm. in that kind of way, or you, you want to go the other way, which is easy and simple. So if you look at one person I saw who had, it was a business owner, so most business owners have not put super away because they're always about cash flow. Yeah. But you know, seven thousand, yeah, yeah seven thousand dollars in their super fund. It wasn't you, um, seven thousand dollars in their super fund, and they were told to get a self-managed super fund. And it's just you know, it costs three grand probably to set that thing up. Mm. It's just no, you, that doesn't. You make see sense. all sorts. Yeah. How about a charter boat? What do you think about <laughs> what charter boat? <laughs> <laughs> Charter boat. Charter. No, look, anyway, look, let's wrap it up before we run out of time there, Helen. But the, um, obviously there's a bigger conversation to be had and it's best done by someone in the financial planning sphere. Um, know a good person, Helen Baker? Uh, could come to me if you want. Okay. How do they find you, <laughs> Helen? We are at onyourowntwofeet.com.au. Oh, fabulous. Okay. Helen Baker, the resident expert, financial planner at the East Central Business Show. We'll speak to you next time. So just a general chat with Helen Baker, our resident expert financial planner on the East Central Business Show. Helen, now, uh, where does this passion come from about financial planning? We've just shot your first series. You've talked about you like it. Yeah. Where does that come from? I didn't know to start with. So my background was originally uh, more as a fixer. So I used to go into businesses and fix things and make things happen. So mm. I think the combination of the finance background, the project management, the fixer, and uh, dealing with people one, two, three, and here I am. Okay, fabulous. Now, we're going to put a disclaimer up on, around us at the moment, so it's probably down here somewhere -ish. But, you know, it's really important that people understand that whatever we do in these episodes is not specific advice, yeah? No. So specific advice must be tailored to their personal circumstances. Mm. So we'll just be talking generally mm. about bits and things, and if that interests them and sparks them, they can seek specific advice from there. Okay, so now how do people get the Helen Baker though? So there's a book and there's a website to make contact, yeah? Yeah, so there's a website, there is the book that you can buy, I'm on LinkedIn, um, you find me wandering around Brisbane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Leave me alone if I'm at the groceries, <laughs> no. <laughs> so yeah, just uh, on your own two feet, .com .au mm. is uh, the hub of where you'll find everything you need to know and really. That's a book title as well, isn't it? It is. What does that mean? It's all consistent. Okay, fabulous. All right, so that's a, a couple of great ways to get your Helen Baker, the resident expert financial planner on the East Central Business Show.